ADHD affects 5.3% of children globally, kind of. That is just an estimate and low estimate for us to keep in mind when identifying students with ADHD in primary. In Canada, where I live, the numbers vary from province to province, but the estimated prevalence is approximately 8.6%. In the United States, the estimate is 10.2%. 5.3% of a primary classroom like the one I taught means that I would see a case of ADHD in a six-year-old at least once in each group of children I taught. However, if you are a teacher in the US where the estimates are higher, you would likely have at least two students with diagnosed ADHD. This ain't going away, folks. We need to talk about treatment of ADHD in school settings. Thank you for joining me as I share from my blog post how to be identifying students with ADHD in primary. So you may ask, how often is ADHD undiagnosed? Numbers are, to me, a bit dry, but the disparity between different, different regions does beg a few questions. So let's chat for a wee moment about why the difference in the numbers. The cause could be as simple as insufficient practitioners to diagnose ADHD. More research is needed too. Studies determining estimates need to include estimates relative to age, gender, ethnicity, geographical regions, socioeconomic status, and access to mental health care coverage. So again, how often is ADHD undiagnosed? The prevalence that I mentioned initially is the beginning of the conversation on identifying ADHD in the primary classroom, not the end of the conversation. Before I dig in, as I have mentioned in earlier blog posts, I am Canadian. However, I also know that I have readers from all over the world. I typically draw from North American research and resources. Why is this relevant? Because there are entire nations that do not recognize things like ADHD, never mind the treatment of ADHD in school settings. This definitely impacts global calculations, and I recognize that the information for your context may vary from what I share. As I research this blog post, I am dancing back and forth between the Canadian ADHD Resource Alliance, known as CADRA, Children and Adults with Attention Deficit or Hyperactivity Disorder, CHAD, and the site, the Hallowell ADHD Centers. You may want to bookmark those websites as references for identifying ADHD in the primary classroom and to find resources for teaching students with ADHD. The links are down below. I've also been drawing from ADHD 2.0 by Dr. Edward Hallowell and Dr. John Rady. The first step on this journey is to identify ADHD student behavior. There are several symptoms for identifying students with ADHD in primary. Inattentive symptoms of ADHD are careless mistakes or details are overlooked in schoolwork. The students are distractible. They have difficulty with following instructions. They may not appear to be listening when spoken to directly. They might have poor organization and chores or work in the classroom may not be completed. Tasks that capture that require sustained mental effort may be ignored or avoided. They may lose homework assignments, books, jackets, backpacks and sports equipment frequently. The hyperactive or impulsive symptoms of ADHD are that they are fidgety or squirmy. They may have difficulty or trouble staying in their seat. They may run and climb in inappropriate places. Playing quietly could be a challenge for them and they have a hard time waiting his or her turn. They're restless on the go or driven by a motor or an excessive talker and they might interrupt with an answer before a question is even completed. They may interrupt others or intrude during conversations and activities. They may not recognize boundaries with the possessions of others. These behaviors just look like kids to me. The question is how extreme is the action or behavior relevant to the peers of the same age. So let me share with you my personal journey with ADHD. Have you heard me mention before that I have ADHD? I was diagnosed as an adult and the diagnosis answered a lot of questions. <laughs> a few but not all of my siblings were diagnosed as adults as well. We all have different takes on the impact of ADHD on our lives and our approaches to management. And we all have different takes on whether or not to take medication. All of that is to say that managing ADHD in young children is a very personal thing. What you want from the parents may not be the same as what they want for their child. Because I was not diagnosed as a child, I have developed any number of strategies over the course of my lifetime without meds. Because of that, I know how much can be done without meds. I can also see the impact of ADHD on my life. 
I do wonder about the potential impact an earlier diagnosis might have created. I have tried medication more than once and I have seen the potential benefits in my life. I love some of the ways it makes me feel. However, I would absolutely say that also because of some of the other ways it makes me feel, I would not ever try to insist anyone else take ADHD medication. As teachers, we don't have the right to do that, nor is it appropriate to attempt to do that. And what is essential for everyone is to understand that for 20% of people, it's not effective. I'm one of those people. Therefore, we need to really consider what the treatment of ADHD in school settings looks like with or without medication. And that starts with a diagnosis, maybe. So who diagnoses ADHD in a child? ADHD is a medical diagnosis. We, teachers, can't diagnose ADHD, but we are responsible to implement strategies for supporting students with ADHD. And often we can initiate the diagnosis by providing parents with what we see from the student in the classroom. The goal of the diagnosis is to help change the direction of the child's life, not solely to have the child medicated to make the classroom simpler to manage. This can change their lives. According to Chad, early diagnosis and treatment of a student with ADHD can lead to improved functioning in early childhood, fewer behavioral problems as identified by the teacher, higher academic skills as identified by the teacher, lower child report risks for risky behaviors and drug use. If we know we want to diagnose a student with ADHD, then how do you go about communicating to parents about having their child diagnosed with ADHD? The good news is that there are several forms that you can use for identifying students with ADHD in primary, and then perhaps present those forms to the parents in a kind and gentle conversation. There are many forms available out there and forms that are intended for teachers to fill out when a doctor is consider, uh, considering identifying students with ADHD in primary, and I've linked those down below. I find some of these forms are a good objective student ADHD checklist that provides a bridge for communicating with parents when it is used with patience, grace, and evident love for their child. A student ADHD assessment can take some of the potential perception of bias away for both teachers and parents. As I list some of the student ADHD assessments and student ADHD checklist options, please remember again that I have provided links to the forms in the description below. So the CADRA SNAP 426 Parent and Teacher Form, the CADRA Teacher Assessment Form, the CADRA WFIRSP Parent Form. This form is best offered to receptive but unsure parent to complete in the privacy of their own home. It may help them to see what they perceive as just life is something they can get support for. CADRA forms are other forms that uh, parents may want to explore. There's also the National Institute for Children's Health Equality Vanderbitty Assessment Scales. This particular assessment is the first of three editions, so it is not current. However, in that you are not doing a medical assessment, it is a good reference. I hope these student ADHD tests are helpful and supportive, but please remember, none of these student ADHD assessments and student ADHD checklist options in and of themselves are a diagnosis of ADHD. These student ADHD assessment and student ADHD checklist forms are only a tool and they need to be considered by a medical professional. ADHD has many indicators that overlap with other diagnoses and they need a trained professional to tease those indicators apart. Once you have completed the student ADHD assessment or checklist, you find to be relevant, invite the parents in for a meeting and share your findings with them. Be gentle, be sensitive, be kind, be compassionate. Let the parents know that getting a diagnosis about ADHD can be a powerful positive in the life of their child. There is a video link below that you can watch or share with parents on the advantages of ADHD. This is their child and everyone does their best. If the parent has ADHD themselves, they may be overwhelmed by their child's behavior. They may also consider the child's behavior to be normal. Regardless of parents and doctors, you are still managing ADHD in school. At the risk of being very repetitive, regardless of parent or medical involvement, you are likely to be already managing ADHD in school. As I shared earlier, I was not diagnosed as a child and you will likely have students who are undiagnosed or parents who refuse to consider diagnosis because they are concerned that they will have to put their child on meds. 
perhaps the doctor looks at the student and ADHD test and disagrees with your assessment and the child is not medically diagnosed with ADHD. Regardless of parent involvement and medical diagnosis, the outcome of identifying students with ADHD in primary means the next step is managing ADHD in the classroom. Join me next week as I share Unraveling ADHD, the truth about managing ADHD in school. Thanks for joining me.